Hello everyone, welcome back to Destiny. Uh, this video is a little different. In fact, uh, I have someone new commentating with me today. Hey, new commentator, not a new player. I'm Random Ninja. Indeed. You might know me from such things as Kalon Zombies All for One LP, which, don't play that game, play this game. This is a much better co-op shooter. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, you are quite, like, more than likely more experienced between the two of us, uh, in terms of this game. Yeah, I got into this game in year two, and played it pretty religiously, uh, until Destiny 2 came out, and, and I sort of put it on the back burner almost, almost entirely. Impressive amount of data. I... In terms of hours, I've got about a thousand in Destiny One across PS3 and PS4, which is a lot less than some people have. Yeah, yeah, I've I've seen the numbers. It's, it's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Who boy do some people play this game a lot? <laughs> so uh, to kind of offer some explanation as to what's happening, uh, yes, this is the same mission as the uh, the actual update. This is Lost to Light, except this is being played on heroic, and there is something special we are achieving with this. Um, so, if you speed through the opening section and don't die, uh, the door that I, that I kind of pointed out in the main video is not closed. In fact, it's open, and that's an alternate exit to this level. Yeah, so the idea here is, in year two, they introduced a daily mission roulette, which was the heroic difficulty of a certain mission. And... A f handful of missions on heroic difficulty had those alternate exits, alternate endings and sort of sub-objectives that you could complete. Um, Lost to Light was a big one. Uh, it rewards you the Black Spindle weapon, which for a very long time was essentially the be-all, end-all weapon for raids. Yes, it, so I... I kind of demonstrated the icebreaker. That was year one's um, mega weapon. And the Black Spindle kind of replaced that. So Black Spindle was built off of a legendary from year one called Black Hammer, which you would get from Crota's End. Just took an ogre. Black Hammer is better in every way. Uh, they sort of nerfed it a little bit for Black Spindle. Unless it's taken. But what it does is if you get three headshots in a row, it reloads itself. We've got it. So you never need to reload the weapon if you're shooting it right, which is why it's so good, because King's Fall involved a lot of bosses that were more or less stationary. It's empty. So yeah, now that we've, uh, now that we've finished up the, uh, the opening bit, now is when it actually kind of gets a little interesting, because we have to do the, uh, the Tomb Husk section without dying at all, and doing it pretty quickly. Eris? Cade? Yeah, so the caveat is, if you wipe, you cannot enter the door. So, checkpoints or not, you have to go to orbit and start the mission over again in order to get through. Yep. Not terribly difficult if you know the path. Uh, if you're trying to kill everything, though, it can be a little tricky. Yeah. In, in this specific case, it's much, much better to just uh, ignore what you can and forge ahead. Uh, as, of course, then there's the tomb husk sections, which are incredibly hairy if you don't clear some of the uh, taken out. Yeah, you can very easily wipe to the... Specifically the second Tomb Husk section with the wizard and the knights. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll really they'll really get your goat if you let them. Yeah, like here, I came incredibly close to dying. So it it's, it's a balancing act. What can you speed through? What can you not? You know, mainly depends on what kind of taken you're, you're up against. Like knights and wizards are definitely... Some of the more annoying and more dangerous of the Taken. Oh, definitely. The Scions, while they're multiplying, is annoying. Uh, they hardly hurt you. Phalanxes can be annoying just only if there's an open pit nearby. Um, for the most part, it's, it's pretty bog standard. Just run through, get the Tomb Husk, put it in the hole, and, you know, you're done. Yep. So it is kind of interesting that they that they introduced this because 
he would not have thought to check it if you just ran the story mission. Right. Yeah, um, it definitely took a little research on my end and saying, oh, hey, that, that's a thing I can do. And then I proceeded to try it solo for like, I don't know, two hours, three hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a great idea. Definitely would recommend that you not do that. <laughs> the amount of things some people can solo that I have trouble with a full fire team just astounds me. Right. Like the stories of people that soloed uh, Oryx, for example. Mm hmm. This. What? Can't do that anymore. But they were able to solo Oryx. Just no big deal. Mm hmm. And then we even wiped here two or three times. I think we had to restart. I Actually, I think it was only one, thankfully. Oh, could be. Only one, then. We're that yeah. good. And We're perfect the second time. <laughs> so, um... Oh, yeah. I did mention back in the, um... The Skolas' Revenge video that... Uh, you were using a... A weapon from Rise of Iron that I would let you explain. Okay, so... I'm using Outbreak Prime. When you... It's a pulse rifle. It's good. It's got Outlaw. What it does special is... When you kill an enemy with a precision hit, it shoots out these little SIVA nanites, which, almost like the Galahorn Wolfpack rounds, they're little things that track and do extra damage. So it's good for trash mobs because you can just get a lot of precision kills over and over and over again and just keep that going. Yeah, Getting it is an entire affair. It involves um, knowing binary... And being able to convert binary to positions 1 through 5. Um, so X, Y coordinates, basically. It involves... <laughs> <laughs> He's not kidding, by the way. There's there's another exotic that I have actually done that requires a little bit of um, sleuthing involving numbers that we, that we will see. Yeah, they, they love their obtuse mechanics to get an exotic so starts with knowing binary great then you actually have to beat wrath of the machine which if your fire team is an idiot that fucking good luck forget about it it's not happening you need perfect coordination um then you have to do a series of activities in a fire team with one hunter one titan one warlock and then solve a series of puzzles with an item in your inventory to actually unlock the next step. Yeah. So it's even more math and more numbers. <laughs> so here we go. Here we are in the alternate uh, path for the mission. We're back on the catch from um, Shadow Thief. And now it's just overrun with Taken and these guys are not playing around. No, thankfully it's not a darkness zone, um, which does mitigate it a little bit, but it it's still real dangerous. Oh, yes. Uh, a lot of nights, a lot of area of effect attacks, a lot of splash damage. Yeah, and uh, this will actually be the first encounter with uh, the Taken Centurions, which you'll see there. It spawns these orbs that'll explode if you don't kill them in time. So those orbs are actually the same Axiant darts as the uh, Void Warlock's Axiant Bolt Grenade. Ah, yeah. Um, so when you die to them, it's the same message as you get when you die to a Void Warlock using them in PvP. Yeah, um... This section of this particular mission operates on the modifier of, uh, I believe it's either Epic or Shielded. So, um, not matching colors to shields is not, not great. You want to be... You want to have all of your elements covered. Unfortunately here, I have only Solar. Um, <laughs> Sunbreaker plus, uh, I can't remember, I think it's Long Distance Relationship and, uh, Gjallarhorn. Yeah, it looks like LDR 5001 or whatever. Yeah. Um, not that that's bad. The Most of the stuff that'll really get you is solar. The knights are all solar. There's a few wizards here and there, but for the most part, the wizards are kind of negligible. Mm hmm Yeah, except for this prick in the hallway to my left here. He can just go die in a <laughs> hole somewhere. I hate him. 
<laughs> so I don't know how many times you've encountered tortured vandals in the uh, in the mainline LP, but boy, is that shield really quite annoying a lot of the time. Oh yeah, they put it up just when you have the the shot lined up without fail. Oh yes, um, I think <coughs> I think I've seen a couple of taken vandals in the videos thus far, but uh, these guys are quick on the uptake in this <laughs> in, in this specific instance. Um, it used to be that the heroic also had additional modifiers, so occasionally you'd be doing this mission and those vandals would be nearly impossible to kill. Either juggler would be active, or you know, just uh, epic and shielded and fresh troops and all that fun stuff to make it even worse to kill them. Mm -hmm. Or God forbid, it's trickle, oh. which is the worst modifier in existence. I, I, I don't know, I rank, um... Oh, what is it? Uh, the one where your shields are higher, but you don't regenerate them. I rank oh, that one yes. pretty high up on that list. Yeah. That's a, that is a pretty bad one. And actually, you do regenerate your shields there. I don't know why it says you don't. You absolutely do, it's just incredibly slow. Oh, yeah. And, well, there, you also regenerate them through, like, Sunbreakers, uh, Cauterize, and things like that. Yeah, so there's a lot of ways around that one, whereas Trickle is just always the worst. Yeah. So, uh, we're coming up on the end of it here. Just uh, one more room. But this room is... Oh, man, this room is a doozy. So this is the caveat for this mission. It's, it's not too hard initially. You do have a timer, but it's pretty generous. The trick is you have to get through this entire room and all the ways of ads within that whatever time is left. So we had just over six minutes to do this, mm -hmm. which is actually not terrible. Previously with worse weapons and not knowing the route and whatnot, it, you would get to here with four or five minutes. And that would get pretty hairy. Yeah. So Gallahorn makes short work of these guys. Um, Outbreak Prime was really good here as well. Yeah. Any super high impact sniper rifle is guaranteed to stun that guy. So you can just stun lock him as well with one of those super high impact sniper rifles. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. It's the same kind of principle as a bunch of old nightfall strikes where one person would be on stun lock duty and the rest would just lay into him with whatever they had. Exactly. Yeah, some things never change. <laughs> So, yeah, um, as, as was mentioned, this is, um, wave defense on crack, plus a boss, and... Yes, yeah. so it's timed horde mode, plus a boss you have to kill. Yeah. It's chaos, it really is, and you can easily, easily get overwhelmed if you aren't paying attention. Oh, yes. Um... It, it does not take long to get surprised. Oh, I, I, there's there's several moments in this video alone where I just get surprised and have to figure out a way to survive, mostly. Yeah. Um, one key thing that you'll see me doing like every time they pop up is killing those blights as soon as possible. I'm not sure in this case if it, if it's the if, well if it's the case, but in most in most places blights will actually respawn enemies or spawn more in. Here, it's just about movement. You want to be able to move around, you want to be able to run around and not get trapped by Scions or the boss. So, they don't continuously spawn more enemies. It's just one wave per health barrier. Um, but that's still enough to get in the way a lot of the time, especially if you're surrounded by knights or by taken centurions. Yes. Um, so, yeah... Um, whenever... <laughs> it's, it's a thing of mine. Wherever I see a Blight, I have to kill it. <laughs> it's it's good, it's good, solid advice. Those Blights, those Blights will get you. Yeah, they, uh... I don't think I've shown it off just quite yet in the LP, but there's going to be a strike coming up where you'll see the full effects of it. But they, uh, they disable your double jump, they restrict your movement, and it's just... Ugh. It's, it's bad news all around, especially if they are spawning more enemies. Um, the number of scions here can get out of control as well, where if you leave one alive, suddenly you've got six. Oh, yes. And, uh, of course, 
there's captains also spawning in here, and you really, really don't want to get hit, but get hit with that bolt. Yeah, so captains shoot a mobile blight. It slows you down, it impedes your radar, it impedes your vision. It's just the blights, but worse in every way. Mm hmm. Yeah, like, so. As, as you can see, clearly <laughs> intentional to demonstrate that. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, captains as well, they're solar shielded. So, solar, all solar is not a bad thing, given the number of enemies. Well, uh, obviously, Heave showing off Stormcaller here, which is the best subclass, bar none. <laughs> Just so good for this because of its ad clearing. The fastest time we did this, we had three Stormcallers. Oh, wow, yeah. So... Three storm callers. If you're running the right loadout, you're generating extra orbs with every enemy you kill. So any, uh, I can't remember what the helmet is called, but there's one which you generate orbs with every kill, and so you're just feeding off of each other, clearing out all the ads without shooting any weapons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've always. I've, I don't. I don't know why, but I've always been partial to uh, to sunbreakers. It's just. It's just a thing, I guess. Oh, and I'm using another raid-specific weapon, I think, as well, in my heavy slot for this section. Um, using Sleeper Simulant. Oh, yes. We've, we've seen that a couple times in the LP. That's another real tricky one. Yeah, that that's the other one that I was mentioning about the, uh, the math yeah. and the numbers. Math and numbers. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go, Black Spindle, you can also get a ship, uh, which is a ship a lot of people tried real hard to get. 290, missing a shot, get ammo back, and three precision shots, refill your magazine. Oh yeah. Super noise. Yeah, and it looks like a beast as well. 